Hey YouTube, welcome back for another Ever Crisis video. Uh, today I want to go over a topic that is very, very, very important. Probably one of the most important things for being efficient and winning fights. Especially ones that are crazy hard like the Sephiroth crash fights. Pretty much any crash fight really for the most part. Um, and then some of the harder content like uh, Bahamut and things like that if you're struggling with them. Um, I, I want to go over these advanced battle tactics. Uh, that way I can kind of give you guys um, an idea of what things you need to be doing in every fight pretty much to get the most out of it. The first thing um, I'm going to go over, and it's not so much a battle tactic, but it's more so of making sure your party's built properly. And... And it really, real for the most part, what it involves is math at the end of the day, right? It, it's pretty much math. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and grab my Sephiroth uh, Crash 2 team, or this was the solo crash team that I used. And I'm going to use Cloud here as an example of what I'm referring to. And when I say math, so this is going to be in reference to essentially your R abilities and what kind of setup you should be focusing on with your R abilities. Um, and, and, you know, essentially do the math for what's going to be the most efficient damage and things you're going to be able to do what you need for a fight, right? So knowing, as they say, is half the battle. So if you know when you go into a fight um, what you need or don't need, that's going to help a ton, right? So so obviously having just, just getting the lore, if you will, and experience of what a fight entails is going to allow you to go and modify a team to make it be efficient in that fight. So perfect example, when I was originally fighting Sephiroth Crash 2, I, I opted to not have Zidane's sword in here. And instead, uh, I had in the Seaside Caller from Red 13. Right, so that's what I had in here. And my thinking was, hey, this is going to give Cloud a ton of HP. You know, it was like he was, he was over 10k at the time. And I get the boost lightning potency. So if you see right here, I'm regularly at 4. And this is going to push me up to up to five right so my thinking was hey i'm gonna get an additional 15 percent lightning damage across the board even if i'm not at max potent uh max uh attack stance right because occasionally my ai might take control of that and you know use use uh you know thunder blade from masamune uh or sorry Mur murasame when i don't want him to and i was like well if doing that though i'm sacrificing the the 15 percent here that I'm, I'm dropping down from level five to four and i was like well you know, but the extra HP, it gives me more survivability because of the phys him having low physical defense and low magic defense, which I was like, yeah, I need that extra HP because I'm lacking the defenses, right? So that was my original plan. Well, so while it worked to an extent, I ended up losing out on some damage in the long run um, because really the only thing it helped for the most part was, was Ramu got a bit more extra damage because it, it not only boosted his physical side damage, but also his magic side damage, which Cloud doesn't really have much of anyway. But the HP really didn't do anything for me. And the reason why is because in the fight, Sephiroth drops your HP down to one. And so when, when his HP is getting healed up with everybody else, it doesn't really do him that much good to have a super high amount of HP if he can't sit at max HP because he's constantly being dropped to one HP. So say if in the phase where he uses Heartless Angel, drops him down to one, and then Octa slashes him right after, he's dead. Doesn't matter, right? So so knowing the R abilities, paying attention to what's necessary and what's going to help you get through, that's huge, right? Sometimes you might need to go, oh man, I'm only like... You know, you might have to do some math sometimes, too. Let me see if I can show you an example here. Um, I'm, and I may not, because I, ju I just earlier today pulled uh, from, from my free pull. I got I got a free um, edged wings. So so previously, to give you an idea, um, I had, on, on for, for regular attacking, I was opting to lower Sephiroth's magic attack, right, on other parties, on other teams that I have. I can actually probably show you here. I, was, I think I was doing it that way still. Uh, let's grab this one. I think I have it like that here. There you go. So, perfect example. So, Edged Wings, because of what it is at OB6, right? We can take a look at OB6. Um, it would put me at 24 ice potency, right? So, it would be w just one point off of giving me an extra 15% ice damage, which means Edged Wings Aerial Frostblade does a tiny bit, uh, does, a, does a bit less damage, right? And it adds up. Right, so so what I did to make up for that and to get me over that little hump, so that way Shiva was doing extra damage, Edge Wings was doing extra damage. I opted to put I put uh, Enhanced Sword here because Enhanced Sword gave me a nice ice potency. Right, it also gave me a boost attack. So I was like, cool. So by equipping that, 
I was able to get my boost attack up to an, to uh, the pre the next level, which gave me an extra three percent and twenty percent here, and then it also um, got me to the next level of ice potency, which is really cool. But it but that's kind of where it stopped, right? So now I'm at a position where hey, maybe I don't need th this anymore, right? Maybe I can focus on something else. So you need to kind of gauge, you know, what's where's the value going to come from? Sometimes it's good to actually have lower stats if you're going to get that at that elemental boost, right? Yeah, so either, you know, the elemental boost, that's going to help you do an extra 15% damage, or if you have a really high sub weapon, an extra 30% damage, right? If you can get extra points. Then you also have to look at, you know, you have the boost magic ability potency or boost physical ability potency when you're at max stance. So again, another thing to pay attention to, if you're going to make sure that you're only attacking at max stance, you know, losing 100 power or only 5% of what your total uh, attack power is might actually be worth it because you're actually going to gain 10 percent uh, an additional 15 back so that puts you at a 10 percent uh, uh positive right so you you really want to pay attention to that thing make sure you're doing the math um it sure it doesn't always matter but in really long fights like sephiroth crash after doing a move 50 times, it's going to matter, right? That that could be 50,000 damage that you've missed out on, and that could make or break the entire fight. So that's like the first and foremost most important thing I want to talk about is in terms of, it's not necessarily advanced, if you will, but I think it is an, a little bit of an overlooked thing where people just go, okay, I just want to go for high numbers, and high numbers isn't always the optimal thing to do. So as far as ad actual advanced tactics, um, I'm gonna go into I'm gonna go into the Sephiroth fight here and show you exactly what I'm referencing. We're gonna go and just do Crash One because I'm not gonna die as quick. Um, actually, actually no, we'll go ahead and do Crash Two, right? Because I've done this, I've done Crash Two too many times, and I'm actually not supposed to be in co-op. Uh, let's see, Solo, and then we're gonna do Crash Two. So I'm gonna use the same exact team I used for Crash Two when I cleared it um, the other day. And so what I'm gonna show you here is a tactic. I'm gonna call it a limit trick. And essentially how it operates is when you use a skill. Or, or, or materia, it doesn't matter what it is. If you ever watch it, as soon as you use that move, your limit meter or your summon gauge just starts to go up. So what happens if you use that move before it can complete when an enemy is doing a timer attack, if you will, because it's got the little bar or little uh, round thing. And if that move doesn't go off, you don't use the ATB because the move didn't fully complete. However, you do get to retain the limit that was acquired from using that ability. So I'm gonna show you that exact tactic right here. This is a huge fight to use it in if you are struggling with this fight. You absolutely wanna use this as much as you can, especially for Aerith, because for those who don't know, when you heal, you get 50% of the limit for what that ATB cost is compared to using an attack ability, right? So in this case, it would actually be more beneficial for me to do a Rurinra at the last second to try to get as much meter as I can because that's three ATB, whereas Kyrag is only gonna give me three and a half of value, right? So if I, if I wait for the last second, bam, See how it didn't hit? But watch my bar in the bottom right, bottom left corner. My limit bar, look at that. See how it's filled up? And I actually, I just watch, the ATB is gonna go back. And I still have my complete limit there. Nothing has actually changed. So that's that's a huge tactic you definitely wanna focus on there. Um, and, and you wanna do that as much as you can. You know, Sephiroth, right? I can do it with Sephiroth right here. We're gonna wait till last second. I don't have to wait till the last second. And this is where this is where characters with really, really long um, animations is actually quite useful. Um, you'll be able to get two characters, sometimes even three, depending on the move, to to uh, get a bunch of limit for multiple characters. So that's a big that's a big tactic. I really uh, I highly recommend focusing on. Um, and you want to do it as much as you can because it does make a huge, huge difference in the overall fight. I'm going to do this move with Cloud. Right? See that? So Cloud doesn't complete it, but he's gonna get he's going to get the um, he's gonna get the limit from that. So so the next tactic I'm gonna show you here, uh, it's I'm just gonna call it I'm gonna call it character switching, and what it is is it's when two characters, um, this one this one's a little more complicated. So I'm gonna pause it real quick. The way this works is the way the AI you basically have to take control of the AI, and the way the AI in this game works is. When you have control of a character and you switch off to another character, the character you were controlling will not take an action f 
for about half a second to one second, eh, probably about one second or so, they won't do anything. Otherwise, what will happen, in, in, especially in a, in a thing like this where it's a sigil phase and the AI is designed to attack the sigil as soon as they have the ATB available for it, what it does is it delays that. So, for instance, in this fight, Sephiroth is weak to wind, right? So I want to maximize damage and I want to get a bunch of wind out or use wind attacks so Aurora um, or Aero Blow or if you have like a wind uh, weapon for something like that. So what I do in this case is when I see my two characters, if they're on the same exact ATB bar, what I will do is I will grab one character. I will wait till right before they're at the three ATB bars or whatever ATB it is to use that ability. Uh, for the, the other that the other character is going to use right because in this case it's sigils so it's likely going to be three uh three atb so as soon as i get right before that three atb i'm going to swap to the other character and what that will do is it'll give me just enough time to use a move with what the, of, of my choosing real quick with the character i just swapped to while the other character i was just controlling will not do anything yet and i can get back to them to then have them do what i want them to do if i don't do that and i say if i wait till i have three atb and i use the move i want to use on the character i already have the other character that has the atb um that i need that i actually need to swap to will instead use the move that they want to use as soon as they hit atb based on what the ai tells it and i lose the option to have that so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to basically swap between the two characters. Uh, in this case, I'm on PC, so I'm just going to keep my mouse over the same spot because they'll just keep swapping on the thing. Um, and then if you're on if you're on a phone or something like that, then you'll just tap in the same spot essentially. All right, so that's kind of what I'm going to be doing here. It, this is this is a pretty this is probably one of the harder tactics to do um, because you have to be really really fast about it. You have to know exact timings, um, you know. But it, but it can make a huge difference. And in this fight, it does because this allows me to use both of my characters for wind damage versus having them sit there and use sigil damage that I don't want them to use. Um, and, then, and if you can't do it right away, that's fine. You can say hold on to one character, um, use up the, the the ATB that they have, and then then kind of start the process from beginning where everybody's at zero. Zero, but obviously the the most efficient way is everybody's at like six like five or six and you start it off asap that way nobody's wasting any atb um on stuff you don't want them to do yet so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and start this uh this thing here let's get it going oh so i didn't get off right away so we're gonna go ahead and tap that so i'm gonna show you here we're gonna swap to we're gonna swap to uh uh see yeah, see they're they're kind of off at the moment so yeah, if they have to be pretty much even. If they're not even, it's not going to work the way I want it to. So I wish I could have shown you here a little better. Um, but yeah, I can actually, I can show you in a, in a previous video, I'll pop up on the screen here, um, to show you how, how I actually was able to do this. Because it's a, it's a pretty sweet tactic and it does great, great damage. Um, and for a lot of fights like this one, it's going to be really, really useful. So, uh, in, in cases like this, um, like I said, you need their, you need their ATB to be exact. Um, and, and then that's how it's going to work properly where I'm going to like right before, like I said, right before I hit three, I'm going to swap to the other character I want to use. They'll be at three by the time I get to them. I use the move I want to use and I'm going to go back to the person that I just swapped from and it's going to make it so that way nobody's using the move uh, any move I don't want them to use because obviously a lot of times AI doesn't do what you want them to do. And the next tactic I want to go over is something I'm going to call uh, we'll call limit delaying and the way this works is when an enemy goes to use an ability or an attack of any kind especially if it's a long attack with a long animation if you use a limit right as that animation is about to end, where it's going to show the damage, what will happen is it'll completely reset that animation. So it could be the attack animation of an enemy, or it could be, say if the enemy does some kind of animation right before it starts up, some kind of um, like ability or move it's going to do that has like a timer countdown or, or the bar that fills, you can delay it. And so what can what you can actually do with a pretty cool tactic is if say if you're really low on HP and you need to build up AT, build up ATB to get a Kirega off or something crazy to survive that move, what you can do is use those limits in succession one after the other in order to just keep delaying that that same move because every time you delay it the enemy is going to come back and try to do the same exact thing every single time so it's a pretty sweet move i'll show it you here it, iron giant's a great example of how to do it because he has big long moves and he has like a big swing and so if you time things properly right as he's doing that swing you can delay the entire thing and it takes another like three four seconds for him to do another one and it's a fantastic way to get uh to get some extra um time and atb 
um, on, on certain enemies. It doesn't work for all of them because some enemies attack so fast and do things so quick with little animation, it's really not worth it. Like Sephiroth is one of them. Um, but there are many enemies, like a lot of, there's a lot of summons that have this, that you can do this with, like Efreed and Shiva, and then also like Iron Giants, another great example of somebody you can do that with. So I'll show you here how, how it operates. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna just, uh, we're gonna lower this guy, get his attack down as much as we can. Let's just do that. That way he's not going to hit me too hard. So I'll show you right here. He's I'm not going to be able to do it now because he's already doing a um, he's doing a big a big physical attacking move, which is fine. Right. So we're going to go ahead when he does another move, though, I'll show you. We're going to go ahead and delay it. So the next time he does something, we're going to delay the crap out of it. Right. So obviously being able to see what you're doing makes a huge help. So here he comes with an attack. Bam. So even though it showed an animation of he hit me, no damage number came up. And he's going to do that same exact move again. And we're going to be able to keep doing this over and over and over every single time. So watch again. He's going to do the same move. See how he's targeting? See how long he takes to do an animation? And again, right? I'm just doing one. I don't need to do more than one. So this is a fantastic tactic to build up as much ATB as you can. So... You know, if I'm running out of ATB, certain things like that, it's a great option to do these things. So there he goes. He's exploding. We're just going to kind of do the same thing here. Bam. So see how his damage, even though it shows like a, like a connection, no number popped up, which means I actually hit the thing before he did his animation. It's a huge, huge tactic that I recommend everybody do here. And again, like I was just mentioning before, if you pop all these abilities... Um, right before doing a bunch of stuff you're not going to take a whole lot of damage it's it's a it's a great trick that i highly recommend everybody doing um it because it really just you take you do like far more damage in general because you got more atb and you're going to take far less damage so yeah really really good stuff here so like this grand sword like you know when there's certain moves that they're just good they're going to set up for and if you can um deny it you know so like right there, I'm gonna actually get a eight. I'm gonna get a limit for for both uh, for both Tifa and Zach because of the uh, the delay using using that uh, that ability I was just talking about where you where the, you have the limit trick you know that I was just mentioning. So so there's there's all pretty much what I would consider the main. Um, advanced tactics of the game utilize them as much as you can it's going to help you out with a ton of fights especially this one like if you haven't cleared floor 50 of the um of the tower the that's iron giant on floor 50 right there um i recommend doing that so thank you guys for watching keep rocking and i'll see you next time peace Thank you for watching the video. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to hit like and subscribe. You can catch me live every single day on Twitch and YouTube. So be sure to check the links down below in the description for my channels. And I will see you guys on the next video.